Hello and welcome to a bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to be attempting this puzzle uh, by Matthias Martinka uh, called Inception. Now this appeared on Logic Masters Germany a few days ago. It's been recommended to us a lot of times since. Um, and I would have loved to actually to do it as a main video on the channel. But on reflection, we thought it might not be a good idea. And that's because it's got a huge number of rules. Um, and in fact, I'm just reading the rules um, as they're written in the puzzle, which you can play. You can just click on the link under the video. And, you know, one of the instructions is shade the grid by standard Hitori rules using pencil marks as clues. Now, I can do that because I know what Hitori rules are. But it occurs to me that you guys watching this might not. And so what I'm going to have to go away and do is to find uh, an explanation of standard Hitori rules. Um, and then we'll get going. One second. OK, so if in doubt, use Matthias's uh, own rules. Here we go. Hitori. Shade some of the cells in the grid according to the following rules. No row or column can have more than one occurrence of any given number. Shaded cells cannot be horizontally or vertically adjacent, although they can be diagonally adjacent to one another. And the remaining numbered cells must all be connected to each other horizontally or vertically. Um, so basically what we have to do is to shade some cells in black here so that, for example, let me see if I can see a good row or column to start with. Um, I'm failing miserably here. If we look along this row, you can see that there are two instances of the digit 2 appearing in this row. Now, it's not possible that both of these cells are unshaded in the finished grid, because if they were, that would break the rules we've just read out. So we have to make sure that at least one of those needs to be shaded in. Um, and why don't we just kick, kick off and I'll see you and I'll sort of explain what I'm seeing as we go along. So the first the first thing now I'm looking at this is that row seven is interesting to me because one of the other rules is that you couldn't have two shaded cells together orthogonally. So I can't shade both of those twos in black because that's against the rules of the puzzle. Now that means one of these twos must be an unshaded two. And whichever one it is, that's going to force this to be a shaded two because there can only be one instance of each digit that's unshaded in every row. So this has to be shaded in. And then the moment we get this in a Hitori, it's very, very important because now we can immediately shade every orthogonally connected cell with this two as being unshaded. I'll use green for unshaded. And now what we need to do as a result of this is to scan and see, yes, we can look this two. That's going to force this now to be shaded, which means all of these have to be unshaded. And we may be able to do all sorts of things with this. That it's amazing, by the way, if you ever watch any of the top Hitori solvers in the world, which is very hard to do now, but it used to be possible on the Nickley website, the speed with which they could do these puzzles. They wouldn't, they wouldn't bother with the green unshading. They can just see it. And they could do a puzzle this size in, I don't know, five seconds, something like that. It'd be, it'd be absurd. If you watched it, you would just go, that's absurd. Here's, here's a couple of tricks I can see though now. This square cannot be shaded because if it is, you have to unshade two twos in the same row. So that's a little trick. We can immediately see that this, this must be uh, green, which forces that three above it to be shaded, which forces these to be unshaded. Now we can see we've got a one possibility of two ones being unshaded in the row. So that's got to be shaded. Those three become unshaded as a result. The other thing I saw, by the way, and I'm doing this in a very haphazard way, never do Hitori the way I'm doing it at the moment. It's really actually important that you, you know, every time you get a deduction like this one, I can see should, I should really be shading that two, unshading these two, this two, I should be shading this one in. Um, I'm doing an abysmal job of this. Um, yeah, there's something interesting I've just noticed as well. But anyway, one thing we can see is that this one, because all of the green cells, in the end, we have to connect them all in an orthogonal region, a single region. So we can't have this cell as shaded now, or this green cell can't connect to any friends. So we need this to be friendly. We need this to be unshaded. Uh, we can't, ice, we can't make this shaded or these two nines would be unshaded. So that's got to be 
shade it. Is that five? Does it see any other fives? I don't think it does. Um, so now we're probably going to have to look for all the areas where I've, that's the same logic there. Look, with that three, if that's shaded, it gives two eights as unshaded in the row, which won't work. Um, okay, so where can we see something useful now? Come on, Simon, there must be something here somewhere. Yeah, we've got two twos in column one. They can't both be shaded shaded cells so one of them is unshaded which shades this one which means this square is unshaded this square needs to be unshaded or this one can't get out that fixes this two as shaded unshade the connected cells and then take another stare at it um, see whether we've learned anything yeah this this three sees that three so that needs to be shaded in those become uh, unshaded as a, as a result of that this square must be unshaded or it's boxing in this three sorry in three eight so that's got to be unshaded now Let's see if there's any fours in the column don't think there are um, okay so where can we go next have we got anything else that's really obvious to do the answer is almost certainly yes I'm appalling at scat I mean it actually it goes to, perhaps it goes into my you know my foibles and difficulties in Sudoku solving is I'm not brilliant at scanning. I'm certainly not world class at it. Um, and Hitori is very much a scanning exercise. This one you know, means that square shaded, which means these all become unshaded. And, ah, yeah, there's some connectivity now. This square can't be shaded, or let me show you why. It would isolate this green region. So that square has got to be unshaded. Um, so we've got five sixes and sevens, twos and nines here. Right, so where is the next little deduction? This two means that square's got to be shaded, and we get four unshaded as a result of that. This one has now shaded that one in. Now we've got connectivity issues at the top. This has got to be unshaded to allow this green region to escape, which makes this shaded makes those two unshaded isn't it amazing as well that this puzzle is going to lead on to other puzzles this is a perfectly reasonable puzzle this nine's got to get out so that's got to be unshaded um yes yeah, so we've got three eights along here nine sevens fours and sixes have we got anything repeating in any other positions i'm sure we will have i've just got to spot where they are Five, two, sorry, eight, two, and five. I don't think we've got anything going on in that column. Three, five, six, and eight. No, I don't think there's anything going on in that column. So where is the deduction we're looking for here? Ones, twos, fours, fives, and sixes. They aren't repeating there. No. No, ah, I'm stuck. No, don't get stuck, Simon. This would be a disaster. This is the first puzzle. Um, okay. Is there a connectivity problem with anything that we're looking at? Possibly. I'm not seeing where it is, though. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes, there is. Let's look at this one and seven combination. What would happen if this was shaded? Well, if this is shaded, because this now has to be unshaded, this one would also be shaded, and that creates a great wall down the left-hand side, which isolates some greens. So we can actually deduce that this cannot be a shaded cell. This must be the shaded cell, because one of these must be shaded. They can't both be unshaded, or we'd have two sevens in row nine. So those two become unshaded as a result of that deduction. Um, similar logic, I suppose, applies to this six. If that's shaded, this would become shaded and we'd isolate this square. So that's unshaded. And one of these must be shaded. So I have to be a little bit careful. Again, this can't be shaded, therefore. So that four becomes unshaded. And, okay, now where do we look? 
So in, uh, in this column, I've got a three that is is um, unshaded. So that three becomes shaded, and those become unshaded. That oh, well, this eight it means that's got to be shaded, which surrounds that by unshadeds. Um, I don't think that's doing anything terribly helpful. Might be wrong. What would happen if this was a shaded cell with these two sevens? They that we'd have to have these two shaded, which which creates a box, which we can't do. So that must be unshaded, and that one means that must be shaded, which means this must be unshaded and allow things to escape. This has got to be unshaded, or we've isolated greens in the bottom of the grid. So we've got to scoot round the bottom, and we've got to understand how we're going to get everything out of here as well. So now have we got any more digits that are repeating or give the possibility of repeating i'm sure we will have we've just got to spot where they are now where are you <laughs> where are you sick uh, we've got we've got two eights in this row ah nine here look at that that nine's giving me a digit over here this is why I'm so bad at this puzzle um, so this becomes two twos we still don't have too many connectivity problems I don't think I think we can escape everything that way this nine is that forcing no I don't oh there's a nine over here so that's forced to be shaded and that's really powerful because now in order to get this green out and join the friends all of those three scales all have to be green and surely that oh and and that one oh we've got a wall so that's green this green eight gives us a black cell here which makes this green and therefore this black and now presumably some oh this two over here yeah this has just been a an exercise in scanning nonsense and now we've got to make that green to to get everything out so there we go we have done the hitori and what do we do next use the shaded cell you use the shaded cells pencil marks as clues the shaded cells pencil marks as clues to shade the grid by standard hikari rules what if a, if a shaded cell contains a pencil mark greater than four, it acts as a zero for the account. What? Oh, that's amazing. Right, okay. So I can see that in the black cells, the shaded cells now, we have lots of ones, twos, and threes, which are valid Akari clues. So, so if you're not familiar with Akari, I better go, I'm going to pause and go back and find the Akari uh, rules. Hang on. Okay, so here are the Akari rules. We have got to place light bulbs in the grid according to the following rules. Light bulbs may be placed in any of the unshaded cells. The numbers in the shaded cells sh show how many light bulbs are next to the given cell vertically or horizontally. Each light bulb illuminates from the bulb to, uh, to a shaded cell or the outer frame of its row or column in both directions and every unshaded cell must be illuminated and a light bulb cannot illuminate another light bulb sounds complicated but um but akari is actually such a beautiful uh, puzzle here we go here's a solved akari so you can see here that the unshaded cells the cells that aren't black are all illuminated by bulbs so this bulb illuminates this cell and this cell i don't know what it is that's illuminating that's illuminating this six and this one but something should be there must be something along here that's illuminating them this this light bulb illuminates everything it can in its row and column until it sees a black cell so that's why this doesn't see this these bulbs don't see each other because the black cell between them cuts off the light um, and I appreciate that this is perhaps difficult to understand if you've never seen Akari before um, and we have done videos on Akari actually. So maybe if you if you aren't familiar with these rules, go and seek out one of those videos and have a look at it. Um, but we we now have the ability to change this puzzle into Akari. If a shaded cell contains a pencil mark greater than four, so that one's greater than four, it acts as a zero for the Akari. So we need to go through the puzzle and change everything greater than 
there's actually no fours at all, are there, in, in, in the shaded cells. So everything, that's got to be a zero. Everything that's four, that's greater than four becomes a zero. And now apparently this is solvable as an Akari. So what we have to do in order to do that, ooh, okay, what we're gonna to have to do is get rid of the green highlighting, that's for sure. Because we're gonna to have to notate whenever we get a bulb. So these three can't be bulbs, can they? Uh, because they've got a zero. In fact, everything orthogonally connected to a zero must now be not a bulb. So let's green all those. And the idea, what we'll have to do is to try and, yeah, I mean, cells like that, that's got to be lit now. Because if that's not lit up, nothing can light it up because we can't put a bulb here. So that's a bulb. But red, and that's going to light up the cell above it, which I guess I'm going to have to change the color of now because I need to record when something is actually lit rather than just being green, which means non bulbed. So that's an eight, that's lit, not an eight, that's a bulb. You know what I mean? It's a bulb. Red is a bulb. Um, same is true there. That must be a bulb, and that must light that one. Oh, I see, and this is a two clue. Yes, okay, I've got to pay attention. Yes, okay, so that's got to be a bulb because it's a one clue. So there must be one bulb orthogonally connected with this clue, and it must be here. And that's going to light up that one and that one. Which means this, oh no, I was about to say something silly. Well, that must be a bulb because otherwise this cell can't be lit. So that's a bulb, and that lights those two cells up. Um, this two needs to have two bulbs connected with it. So that must be a bulb which lights that up and both of those cells as well. I think this notation is sort of working, isn't it? It's not, we haven't got stuck yet anyway. Um, there are some points you can do around Akari. Look at this two clue. If this square was a bulb, because neither of those could then be a bulb, because you'd have two bulbs lighting up each other, um, you couldn't fulfill this two clue if neither of these can be a bulb. So that square there cannot be uh, a bulb. And look, that's next to a three. So all three of those become l lit, which is going to give us loads of yellows as a result. So that's got to be yellow now. This two is lighting up that cell and lighting up that cell. Sometimes I think this puzzle is called light up, actually. This square, how does that ever get lit? The only way now, because this can't be a bulb is if that's a bulb which lights that 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 all of those become lit up now how do you light this one up the only way is if that's a bulb so we're getting a bit of progress here this puzzle um i do love akari but it's not normally the hardest puzzle if you've done a few of them look we've got two bulbs connected to a two glue so that's green and needs to be lit up so that must be bulb which turns that yellow turns this yellow completes this one clue so that's green this must green must be lit. The only cell that can do it is that one. How on earth is this? I mean, isn't it amazing? This is going to lead on to a new Ricarbi. What? This is absolutely mad. Now, yeah, this two clue needs to have two bulbs next to it. They can only be there. And that's going to light up the whole world, basically. All of those squares now become yellow. This one needs a bulb. So that's got to be there. That lights up the bottom row. And okay, so we've got a two clue here. That means that's lit up. Those become yellow. A three clue here, that needs another another thing. So that's all done. And we've just got, I think we've just got to figure out the top. How do we light this cell up? Only if that's a bulb. So all of those therefore get lit by this bulb. And now this can't be lit up, so that's lit up, and therefore that's finished. There we go. That's the that's the Akari puzzle done. Now I'm intrigued. What is this going to mean um, for the Nurikabi? If a cell contains a light bulb, okay, that's a red cell, and its corner mark is not is not eight or nine, its pencil mark can be placed in the grid as part of the solution. It's pencil mark and then shade the grid by standard Nurikabi rules using the placed numbers as clues the pencil marks 
on shaded water neurocarby cells on the, oh, that's I think that's for when we've done the next bit. Hang on, so I've got to understand this because I don't at the moment. What we're being told is that if a cell contains a light bulb, okay, I can see lots of cells that have light bulbs in, and its corner mark is not an eight or a nine, okay, there are still several of those. Let's just highlight all of those and see if we can understand what we've what we're learning about these cells, not an eight or a nine. So it's all of these cells. Its pencil mark can be placed in the grid as part of the solution. Part of the solution, what, to the neurocarby? Shade the grid by standard neurocarby rules using the placed numbers as clues. So is this telling us, I suppose this is telling us that we've got to unblacken, do we, all of the... Perhaps we have to just almost blank the grid here. I'm not sure. Let me... I'm just going to go back and check the actual long-form rules on the other page. One sec. Okay, these are the long-form rules of the Nurikabi. And they don't, I think, refer to anything. Uh, divide the grid into rivers and islands according to the following rules. Each island has exactly one clue. The number of cells on each island equals the value of the clue. All islands are isolated from each other horizontally and vertically. There are no lakes, i.e.g. two by two areas covered entirely by river cells. River cells must all be connected to each other horizontally or vertically. Again, this might sound like gibberish if you've never done neurocarby. Let's see if there's an example neurocarby. This is a solved neurocarby, or it's a partially solved neurocarby. So you can see the five clue here is an island of size five surrounded by river, and none of the river cells form a two by two. This two clue will be surrounded orthogonally by river. Um, so I think we probably do have to get rid of all the yellow colouring, I'm guessing. I'm guessing I've got to get rid of all of the, the black cells as well, because let me just think about that. Let's just have a think about that. If this... That clue there is a Nurikabi clue. I'm not sure whether I have to get rid of the black cells or not. I haven't managed to disprove. I want to get rid of them, but I can't immediately. I think I'll, I'll risk getting rid of them, but I'm prepared that I might have to unwind the whole grid here. These zeros can't now be relevant, can they? Okay, so I've just left with some red cells, and some of these red cells can be whitened. Everything with an 8 or a 9 in it, I don't think counts for the Nurikabi. So let's... Uh, that one as well. So all of these lose their colouring, and all of these clues pick up a Nurikabi clue. 3, 6, 7, 2, 2, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, and God forbid I've missed any of those clues out, because that would be a disaster. So in Nurikabi, typically what you do actually is shade these black. Um, I'm just thinking about colour blindness, whether I should... I think, will people forgive me if I use red? And I can, I know I can change them easily enough, can't I? I'll make them... Um, mustn't lose these cells now. I'll, if I make them, people don't like black against black and blue, do they? So I'll make them uh, orange and then I'll make the river blue and that should work. So I can see I can start this actually in a few places. An island of size one must be of size one. So those are all river. These rivers have to connect to friends. We've got to let them escape. Uh, this three has got to be of size three, so it's got to come here. Now, whichever way this three extends as its next cell, one of these two positions, this will always be forced to be river. That's got to get out and touch its friends. Um, let's see, those two can't connect each, to each other's clue. Otherwise, you'll have a three and a six simultaneously, which is nonsense. So that's got to be an island. That's got to be a river. Um, and so far, this is working, isn't it? Without us having to 
worry that I've deleted lots of cells I shouldn't have deleted. Okay, but now we've actually got to think. What do we do? And again, if you watch the great solvers of Nurikabi, they, it's, it's magical. It's absolutely magical. Uh, this, I appreciate, is less than magical. And that's because I can't see what to do next. Um, hmm. Okay. Maybe this... So this this strikes me. It might not be a classic sort of nickely type Nurikabi. Because what I'm wondering about is whether we've got to be careful about 2x2 two two blue areas. For example, I'm seeing that area there as tricky. This must not be all blue, which means there must be a clue that can interfere with the ability of this 2x2 two two to be all blue. Well, that cannot be a 2 clue. The 2 clue could get to here, but it definitely can't get into those squares. This 3 clue can't reach, so it's got to be this 6 clue, I think. So this 6 clue must take this cell because it can't connect with the 2 clue. So that's a little deduction. That, that, for, that forces this to be water, which forces this to be how this 6 clue gets into this 2x2. Two two. That now must be part of the 6 clue. This, ah, uh, this, I, this, we can't connect the 6 clue with the 3 clue. This is lovely. I mean, how, how can you do this after making... All of the rest, we've already done two puzzles of this same grid. Now this blue has to connect to its friends. That blue's got to connect to its friends. The six clue is now getting a bit trapped in, look, by this two clue. Uh, whichever way this two clue goes, it's really putting pressure on the next digits of this six clue. Ah, this two clue's got to take one of those two, so that's got to be blue. Okay, um, hmm. I suppose this two clue could, could come this way though, and that would give this six clue a bit, bit more leeway in terms of its final two digits. Okay, so now we're stuck again. What do we do next? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is the short and stubby answer to that question. We must have to... I mean, something's got to get in the bottom left corner, but I think that can be the four or the two. Something's got to get into those cells, but I think it can be the four. It can't be the three, actually. So, so this four must go into one of those cells because the six and the seven can't get down this far. Okay, so this is this is actually tricky. This is actually tricky. So, okay, how about that two by two then? What's reaching that two by two? Because this six cannot. The only cell in this two by two the six could reach is this one. Well, that's connected to the two clue. This two can't get into them. This four can't get into them. Aha, this two by two. Yes, this four can't get in. Can this seven get into that two by two? Surely not. It's going to have to. No, it's going to have to come down. It would have to come. No, it can't. So the oh, right. So this two by two can only be reached by that clue, which means that clue goes horizontally. That's vicious. That's not easy. Um, ah, now this six clue has been forced horizontally this way so it can take that square but it can't it could never take those two so it must take this one which pushes the water out this way which forces this up aha and that's the six clue done beautiful now this square's water because one of these two squares must be island um okay what are we going to have to do after this let me just read out. What, what are we doing after we finish the Nurikabi? Pencil marks of the shaded Nurikabi solve the grid. As a standard killer Sudoku, where the cages are the Nurikabi islands and the sum of the digits in the cage equal, equals the sum of the corner pencil marks in that cage. The previously... Good Chris, so this is somehow going to become a killer Sudoku. This is just ridiculous. I mean, it, it, that is ridiculous. Um, 
And then after that, it's a star battle. We've still got we've still got three more. Pu well, we've got two more puzzles after this to do off this one grid. Okay, so this seven must take one of those two cells at least. Um, okay, sorry, I'm not spotting how to do this immediately. If I was doing this at speed, I would be bifurcating like crazy at this moment, but I am not going to do that in a video. Um, I don't approve of it. I don't really approve of it when I'm speed solving even, but I definitely don't approve of it here. Ah, uh, come on. What is it that we've got to do next? So this seven has got to deal with a two by two there. It's got to deal with this two by two. And it can't, uh, it can never come. Yeah, this four must take one of those two squares. So the seven can never come out of this sort of top region. It's gonna to have to stick around in this top area of the grid. So that means that the whole of the bottom left of the grid, we've got to avoid every two by two we can without recourse to this seven. Which is a little interesting perhaps, is it? So I'm now thinking about areas like this. Yes, okay. What is it that stops this from being a blue two by two region? The answer is nothing except this four clue. This four clue can't get there. Even if it tries very hard, it will just fall short. So the only thing that can get into this two by two is if that is a string of oranges along this four. This is a very good puzzle. I mean, <laughs> forget the fact that it's sort of buried in the midst of a Russian doll sequence of other puzzles. Now that's got to be a two. So that forces those to avoid a two by two. So oh, both of these swells are important. We've got to avoid two by two blue regions. That forces this to come out. One, two. Okay, we mustn't isolate. So we can't, if we were to isolate blues in the top right and then connect this up somehow, that's going to isolate a blue area. So every perimeter cell must be taken, which forces the seven to be finished and we can finish the blues surrounding it. So that all made sense. That's now at the finish of that island. Those two both become blue as a result of that deduction. This blue needs to connect to its friends. Don't make a two by two. That forces this square not to be part of the two because it would connect to this, which must be part of the four. So that comes down here. That's therefore blue because it can't be four because the four needs to connect to its domino here. That, oh no, hang on, right, so how do we finish this off? Yes, what gets into the bottom left two by two now? Well, the only thing, given the four needs to take one of those two squares as its fourth uh, fourth cell, is that the only way is this two comes vertically down and prevents a two by two in the corner. So those become blue, that must be blue. Everything that's not blue needs to have a clue, and that becomes uh, the the final island and that is I think the Nurikabi solved. Um, I'm just staring at it to check I've not got any two by two blue regions and all the blue regions are connected. So I think we have. That was a really good puzzle. Now okay let me read what this says now. So it says the pencil marks on shaded water Nurikabi cells are no longer needed. Okay so that's all of the Right, so every time we have a, a set, like a, this nine here, I think it's saying that's no longer important in the puzzle. Solve the grid as a standard killer Sudoku, which I'm presuming we all know the rules of killer Sudoku, so I don't pretend, I'm not gonna go over those. Um, where the cages on the Nurikabi Island, so this is a cage is I think what this is saying. Um, and the sum of the digits in the cage equals it was equal to the sum of the corner pencil marks in that cage the previously placed numbers remain in the grid so this remains in the grid what was under that cell before though sorry let me just um let me 
just go back here. Do we know what was under that digit? So that, oh, that digit was a six. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because we transposed all of these into big digits. So that's telling us, is it that? Well, I think what it's saying is that these five cells here have to add up to four plus eight plus seven plus one plus one, and this, yeah, you know, this this was a six. Or imagine I yes, in fact, I think that's right. Previously placed numbers remain in the grid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like a, acting as a given. So this six is like a given six in this puzzle, and it corresponds to the fact it's got a six underneath it is I think what well, I might be wrong about that. Yes, and that makes sense. In fact, if we look at this four, how if this four was operating as the total clue total, then I'd have to repeat, I'd have to double two this region, which doesn't make sense. So in fact, that four must be a four. I think that's what we're learning. That must be a five. That must be a six. So we're getting more digits here. Those two have to add up to 10. Ah, that's a bit less easy to understand. These have to add up to nine, five plus two plus two. Those have to add up to nine. Well, okay, I hope this is true because I can place six in box one if this is true. Look at this, this is a really beautiful idea. That's six, can't go up there because those two digits add up to nine and they would have to be another three and another three and a six, which will repeat the three. They can't be there by Sudoku and they can't repeat within their cage. So that's a six is what, what I'm going to allege, which means there's a six in one of those two cells. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't like that. I was, why is it doing that? So it seems to think the two and the fives in the corners are like pencil marks. So I have to do that. I'm going to do that just to differentiate these pencil marks from the two and the five type pencil marks. Um, okay, so one of, that means one of those two cells is a six. One of these two cells is a two. Uh, I've got so many digits. There's so many digits in this puzzle. It's a little bit difficult for me, at least, to know quite how to deal with them. Um, now, these three digits add up to nine, and they can't include four, and they can't include, they can't be one, two, six, so don't they have to be one, three, five? I think they do. Um, and that's not three, and that's not one. So we've got a one, three, five triple here. The two must be in one of those two squares in box eight. So there's a two in one of those two cells in box number two. Uh, okay, these digits add up to 12, but we've got a two in there. So the other two in this add up to 10 and they're not two, eight or four, six. So this has either got one, nine or three, seven in it. Don't know if we can do that. I can't see immediately how to do it. Four lives in one of those two cells by Sudoku. It's not that easy to see how to finish this. <laughs> um, these two squares add up to 10 and they're not three, seven or four, six. So they're either two, eight, which would be that way round or one, nine, which would be, aha, right, here we go. So that's digit there can't be a one because of this one, three, five, triple. So that's an eight and that's a two. And therefore that's a two using our pencil marks. There's a two up there somewhere in, in this cage. I've worked out what that cage adds up to yet. Um, can we do any better than that? Yes, I hear you all cry. <laughs> um, Oh, hang on, this is getting confusing now because I've put this two in. I can't remember what was underneath it before. It was a one. So, so these had to add up to 12. So when I put the two in, these have to add up to 10 now. Okay, so if this was three, seven, it would have to look like this. I think I have to pencil mark this, otherwise it's going to get very confusing. Or they're one, nine. Okay, so these are the options for these cells.
I've done the options for these cells. I've just got three more cages left that I've got to figure out. So let's try and do that. These add up to nine and they're not three, six or two, seven. So they're either four, five or one, eight. And if they're one, eight, they're this way round. Can we do better than that? I don't know. These digits in this cage add up to 12, 19, 21. These digits add up to 21. But whatever that digit is, where does that go in this box? That digit can't repeat in its cage and can't go there and can't be six. So it's one of those digits is this, this digit. So this is one, three, four, five, or eight. That's absolutely hopeless, isn't it? What about that digit then? Yeah, in fact, maybe I've got to look at the rest of column four because I've effectively got quite a lot of digits. I need two sevens, eights, and nines into these squares. So let's put that in, two, seven, eight, nine. We know these two are not two. Can we do better than that? And then that one's not seven. Um, don't know if I can do better than that, actually. What was I looking for? These were adding up to 21, weren't they? That doesn't feel like it's very restricted. Um, it would be restricted if, I, if including that one, you have to make all six of them up to 21. That would be very nice. But unfortunately, that is not what we are being told, I don't think. So my impression, this could be wrong, is that this cage has a lot, this is, this is Atlas basically, it has a lot of weight to carry in terms of solving this puzzle. Um, now, let's check what we've got then. We've got 8, 9, 10. Oh, this is 21 as well. Ah, that's, that is massive. Okay, these cells have to add up to 21 and there are six of them and you can't repeat the digit in a cage. So these are the digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, which surely is huge. Yeah, well, it is immediately interesting. Where does 1 and 4 go in this cage? They have to go in exactly those two cells. And that means this can't be a six, so that must be a six. So these two squares are a one, four pair. These three squares are two, three, and five. Oh, this one's a three, just by Sudoku, therefore. That three might be interesting, because I'm seeing it's ruling out a three from that square, which rules out a seven from this square. So this becomes a one, nine pair. That's no longer a nine. Um, it's probably probably more we can do with that. Let me just think about, yeah, where does three go in this box? It's got to go here. Three is in one of those two. I don't have a way of pencil marking it because if I put them in the middle, it's gonna really mess things up. Um, so this, well, that's an eight, nine pair, isn't it? In box number three. And these squares are sevens, eights, and nines, all coming down here. That's not eight. So we've got a seven, eight, nine triple in column nine. We've got an eight, nine pair here. We've got, can we do better than, we've almost got like ones, fours, and fives. If this, if this wasn't, is this eight, one, or four, five, isn't it? Does that, no. I don't think that does do enough work. Um, okay, so what does this mean? How do we take this further forward? Is the question I'd like to ask. I don't know the answer though. It's probably going to be Sudoku. It's normally Sudoku when I can't do the Sudokus on the channel, isn't it? Um, where can we where can we get simple deductions that are going to actually help us? Um, is it true to say I'm just wondering about this two five pair? 
2 in box 1. I don't know where it goes, but it's got to go in one of those cells. Oh, no, in fact, I do... Ah, I do know where it goes. It's got to go there. Oh, good grief. Right, so that's 2. That's 2. That's 5. That's no longer 5. So if you can't put 5 in here... Uh, no, you, you can't... Uh, no, I was about to say something that would have been nonsense, I think. 3 is definitely in one of those two squares. So six, six I've already pencil marked, that makes sense. So, how can we get more progress here? The answer to that is I don't know. I suppose if we look along row one, what digits have we not yet even thought to address? I've not managed to pencil mark 2 into those squares. I can't pencil mark 2. So the 2 in row 1 must be in one of those squares and therefore it's not here. Which is interesting because that place is 2 in the column. It can only go here. Now 9 I've not managed to place in the top row either. So 9 is in one of those two cells. Which means 9 is not here. Which means 9 is in one of these two cells. In fact 9 is there. It's the only place it can go in the column. That makes that a one and that a nine. Wow, this is not, this is brilliant. I mean, this is just, it's not, it's just a really good puzzle, isn't it? Um, one now is in one of these three cells. I'd love to know where it was, especially if it would disambiguate that one four pair and help me with this nine domino. Or can we get that a different way? I wonder if I can get that with column seven, where I need ones, fours, sixes, and eights. So this square is just six or eight. This square is four, six, or eight. And this square, ah, that square is six or eight. So that's a four, that's it, it's this column. The one, four pairs are really powerful. Wow, yes, so this has to be four. This has to be one, this has to be four. That forces this to be a one eight pair, which only goes in one direction. I mean, it's, it's stunning. This is stunning. Um, now this square, which we know I was mirroring one of those squares, can't be four anymore. So that's one, three or eight. It can't be one anymore. So it's three or eight. Ah, now I wonder if I make that eight and that seven, yeah, that doesn't work, because I had to make those five squares add up to 21. 8 plus 7 would already would mean these had to be a 1, 2, 3 triple, which they can't be. So that can't be 8, it has to be 3. Oh, that's a hard one, 3. That, oh, I was about to say it does nothing. It gives me a 3 here, actually. 3 in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Um, okay, come on. So... These squares have to add up to 18 now. Maybe I can do the secret on the row. So the secret is that these nine cells add up to 45. I've got 18 here, 24, 29. So those two have to add up to 16 and they have to be a nine seven pair. And that is gonna be very nice indeed. So that's a nine, that's an eight, and that's a seven. And that's an eight. And that's a seven. Okay, that's that's just strangely clever of matches. It's just mad, isn't it? Um, okay, so these squares are now five, six, and eight, just to complete this column, which means six lives in one of those two cells, which I presume is useless. Uh, we need ones, fours, and fives along there. And presumably, again, I, I, I suspect... Oh, yeah, we can place the one. So the one must go there. This is a four or five pair, which we can fill in. Four now must be here in box number four. And those two squares are a seven, nine pair, which doesn't seem to be resolved. But that square should be a four by Sudoku. That looks okay, doesn't it? which means four is exactly here, which places two by Sudoku. So this column 
hasn't got 9 in it and hasn't got 7 in it. And the 7 here is useful. So that's 9, that's 7, that's no longer 7 as a result. This square should be a 5 and that looks good in terms of the top row. It's just, I mean, it's, it's just amazing that this is solving. It's just amazing. I'm, every time I put a digit in, I'm, I'm scanning across thinking, well, that's going to break. That's going to break because it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real that this can have a solution. And yet it still seems to be working. So that's not five. Um, can I keep that going? Don't know. I've got quite a lot of high digits in here. Um, sorry, I'm not seeing exactly where the best place to look is. Let me just have a quick stare and see if there's some obvious stuff that we're missing. It's probably, probably could be this row or this row. I think one, six, seven, and eight. So that square only has the ability to be seven and eight by Sudoku. That square, one, six, seven. Ah, oh, that square can be lots of things. One, six, or seven. And that square can literally be six. Oh, I see. So the question we should ask is where does one go in this row? And that's can only go there. So that would have been a sensible question. So these square, oh, that can't be nine. Sorry, I didn't see that either. So this is six, seven, and eight as a triple, which places five. And means we need a nine in the row, which is gonna have to be there which places the nine and the seven and the eight and the six and the eight and the seven. Good, good. I'm pleased to see all those things placed. Uh, now these squares, uh, ooh, it looks like one of those needed to be a six actually. Yes, it's this one. So those two squares should be three and five, which looks good in terms of actually finishing the puzzle but I don't know if I can do those. That's a three or a five therefore, and that creates a three, five pair in this row. So the other digits along here are six, sevens, eights, and nines. So that's six or seven, and that is seven or nine, believe it or not. Okay, so the only place for eight in this row now. Yeah, yeah, so the question we could have asked if we thought it to ask it first is where does eight go in box seven? It has to go here. That places one, places five, three, and one, and five back over here, and five and three. This is the eight I was talking about before, so that becomes six. We've got a seven, eight pair here, which is done. That's good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's eight, that's seven, that's nine, that's seven, that's six, that's five. That's six, that's nine. That's seven over here, and this should be and I suppose the checker might work on this as well. I'm just thinking about that. That's a nine and that's a three. So we might get some actual comfort. This is correct. I'm just gonna click check. Yeah, oh, good grief. <laughs> so that's correct, apparently. That is how to do the killer Sudoku. Right, I'm back again. And if you, um, if you watched, well, yesterday's video on the channel, you will know I had a problem um, with uh, the video when I finished the puzzle uh, because I finished the star battle um, but I had to pause the video between the killer Sudoku and the star battle um, for a school run and whatever it's done to my Mavavi software I don't know but the final portion of the video was unwatchable so I'm gonna go well I've gone back as you can see to the end of the killer Sudoku and I'm gonna resolve the star battle for you but this now is not live um, so I'm going to, I know what I have to do. Um, I can tell you it took me about 15 minutes to solve the star battle <laughs> at the end of this uh, yesterday, which is a long time for a star battle. Um, and that's because I don't think it's that easy to do it. Um, but maybe, uh, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through the way that that I found yesterday. So you guys will be able to tell me if this is if this is a sensible way to approach the star battle or not. Um, what I can tell you is that this, uh, this puzzle or these puzzles continue to be remarkable. So what do the instructions tell us when, when we get to this point? So we've just done the killer Sudoku. Well, we've got to place two stars in every row, column and three by three region using normal star battle rules, which means that if we, if we work out that 
you know this cell is a star then you cannot have a star touching it in fact let's look, what we have to do is get rid of all the colors as well if i remember rightly so we get rid of all the colors and we're told that four, cells with fours and fives can't contain stars so let's get rid of all the fours and fives and make sure that we're not tempted to star those something like that i think um, and we'll use orange so you can't so it, let's say we worked out this cell was a star uh, i don't know what color i'll make stars let's try blue then that would mean that we couldn't put a star in any cell surrounding this six including the diagonally touching cells so none of those cells could be a star so and we ha our task is to put two stars in each row two stars in each column and two stars in every box and that is quite constrained to be honest because there are you know there's quite a lot of pressure that you can immediately exert on cells like cells like this one could actually never be a star ab initio because if you did try and make this a star look what it does to box two it immediately forces these cells not to be stars and then you'd have to put two stars in a two by two area now one of the best tips i can give you for star battle is that when you're thinking about how to position your stars always remember that in any two by two area you can only have a maximum of one star because of this rule about diagonal touching so that cell you could immediately mark as orange now the other deduction i noted fairly quickly yesterday it didn't help me very much but i did note it quickly is that in this puzzle you could never have a star in any of the central positions of a box and that's because if you're trying to put two stars into a box you'll have it you'll have a lot of difficulty if you put a star in the central cell so you can arrive at this position fairly quickly but now i i genuinely think it's difficult what i did was i noted that in box six uh, one of those cells must be a star and one of these cells must be a star because we can only put one star in a two by two region and I need to put two stars in the box. You can see that this is this is sort of forced. And then I started to think about box nine. And in particular, I, I could see quickly that there's no that if there was no star in those three cells, we would have a big problem. Because if there's no star in those three cells, you'd have to put two stars in these three cells, and that won't work. So then I thought, well given there has to be one star at least in these three cells is it possible there are two stars in these three cells and this it's not actually possible because if we i don't know what color to make my stars maybe i'll make them black if you do put two stars into those cells you now have a problem in column eight regarding you need to put two stars in column eight but you can't put any stars in those seven cells you'd have to put two stars connected in these two cells and that won't work so that tells us there's exactly one star at the bottom of column nine and therefore in box nine there is exactly one star in this little uh, triomino um, and it was about here that i found it very hard to do much for a couple of minutes um, let me just try and articulate the sorts of things you can think about here um, one of the things you can note is, is is to try and take columns together so if you take column seven and column eight together bear in mind we've got to put four stars into this column but, but also bear in mind the two by two rule you can see we've approximately placed two stars in this two by two we could have one star but there's always going to have to be a star in this two by two at the top that's forced there's definitely a star here and there's a star in one of those three positions crossing the box but i didn't you know that that's that's a difficult thing to pencil mark uh, and i i don't really know how to pencil mark that well um now what i think i ended up doing at this point i did i did quite a lot of thinking on this box and i'd love to know if there's something simple that you can do with this box that sort of blows open the right half of the grid but i didn't find anything and what i eventually ended up looking at was column two because there's column two has quite an interesting 
geometry, especially around, believe it or not, these two cells. Because if either of these two cells is a star, look what it does to column two. Because, it, because if either of these two squares is a star, let's just try a star here, just to show you what I mean. If this is a star, you now have to put stars in those two positions um, in column two, because there's nowhere else left to put them. But that is a big problem because of the way that the geometry works with these, these triominoes in boxes one and, and seven. Because if you have a star here, you've got to put a star there. And if you have a star here, you've got to put a star here. And now where are you gonna put the last star in box four? You need another one and it can only go here and that's three stars in column one. And I think it's even worse if you try and put the star here on the other on the other hand. If you try and put the star here, you've obviously just got, you know, you've only got three cells that you can put the second stars in, in boxes one and seven. So this tells us straight away, not straight away, but it tells us with a bit of thought that neither of these two cells can be stars. So they get oranged. And now look, all of a sudden row five opens up. We could have put two stars in row five. There's got to be a star in this domino that removes stars from every orthogonal neighbor. So all of those squares get canceled, if you like. Um, and there's got to be a star here just to give us a second star in that row. So that becomes a star. Those become orange. This can no longer be a star. That becomes orange. The second star in the box now is forced to be here. So that becomes not orange. Well, this becomes, sorry, this becomes star and that becomes actually orange. Now in box five, you can see you've got to put the star here and that allows you to put lots of oranges in. There's got to be a star in this domino. So neither of these cells can now be stars. Um, in this column, we've got to put two stars and there's only two places left. So we can immediately do, oh, whoopsie, I don't know what I did then. I was just trying to do something simple. I was trying to put a star there and eliminate stars from those cells. Um, and there's got to be a star here as well. So we can put that in and eliminate stars from those. This has to be a star now. We've got our two stars in, in column nine we have to put another star into box three. So you, we reach this sort of position and it, it sort of collapses from here, if I remember rightly. We've got, we can put one star in there, so this must be a star. That's our second star in row three. So that's now oranged. Now you can't put a star here or you couldn't put a second star in the box. So that gets oranged. There's a star in there, there's a star in here. So both of those get oranged. This gets starred. We've got two stars in row one, so they get oranged. Those two must now be both stars. This must be a star. We need two stars in box four. Uh, now we can orange those as a result. We need two in this column, so that's got to be a star. That's no longer a star. Um, now, if we look carefully down column six, one of these exactly must be a star. Don't know which one, but let's put that in. So one of these exactly must be a star, and that's the second star in the bottom row. So we can do some more oranging. In box seven, this now has to be a star, and one of these two has to be a star, but it can't connect to its friend up here. So those two become stars. That becomes orange. This becomes star. Oopsie, that becomes not star. This becomes, you've guessed it, star. That becomes not star. And that becomes star. And I think that that is the solution that we're looking for. So let's just check. We've got to check that none of these black cells is connecting to another one. And I think that looks good. We've got, should have two in every row. That looks good. And we should have two in every column, which we do. So that is the correct solution to inception and i have to take my hat off to matthias because this is it's a startling puzzle it was a startling series of puzzles because actually all of the puzzles individually are good puzzles they are very interesting puzzles you know we started off with hitori um and that was a decent hitori with a lot of connectivity logic in it and then we went to akari and the Akari, the Akari was nice. The Akari was probably the easiest of the puzzles. 
um, but still good. And then the Nurikabi was really interesting because we had to think about the two by twos very carefully in order to work out how to position the regions or the islands. And then that became a very good killer Sudoku. It's just mad. It's just mad, isn't it? And then that star battle is very interesting as well. It's not a simple star battle. Even for somebody, I mean, like me, I have done must have done hundreds of star battles in my life. I love star battle as a form. I know most of the tricks. And, you know, you can't just rattle this off. It's very, very fine puzzle setting. And to create this sort of Russian doll effect where you do puzzle after puzzle off the same grid, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. I hope you had a go at it. I really do. And do drop a comment in if you did and give Matthias as much praise as you possibly can. Um, um, yeah, we'll see you again later for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.